Hello friends, Techman Pat here. Today I want to give you an overview of Wi-Fi 7's multi-link operational technology in under five minutes. So strap in, like, subscribe, and let's get started by rolling the intro. Let's create some context about Wi-Fi 7. It is the seventh generation of Wi-Fi promising major improvements over Wi-Fi 6 and 6E, offering speeds up to four times faster. It also includes clever advances to reduce latency, increase capacity and boost stability and efficiency. Everything you would expect from a new generation. Now, Wi-Fi 7 is IE 802.11be in the old naming convention, whereas Wi-Fi 6 was IE 802.11ax. Like previous standards, Wi-Fi 7 will be backwards compatible but to take advantage of the new features and improved performance it promises, you'll need to upgrade your devices. That means buying new modems and routers, not to mention new smartphones, laptops, and TVs, and so on. Wi-Fi 7 is faster, supports more connections, and is more adaptive to maintain reliable, low latency performance. You see, Wi-Fi 7 also tackles congestion and interference, bringing tangible benefits to areas with densely packed devices or neighboring networks that overlap. The latter is more significant for enterprise Price and large venues. You may understandably wonder what distinguishes Wi-Fi 7 from Wi-Fi 6E, which broadly promises the same advantages over previous standards by opening up the 6 GHz band, especially since Wi-Fi 7 will use the same three 2.4 GHz, 5 GHz, and 6 GHz bands. So to help with these, here are some notable upgrades. Each band is broken into channels. The 2.4 GHz band comprises of 11 channels of 20 MHz each. The 5 GHz band has 45 channels, but instead of being limited to a width of 20 megahertz, they can combine to create 40 megahertz and 80 megahertz channels. The 6 gigahertz band supports 60 channels, and with Wi-Fi 6E, they can be as wide as 160 megahertz. You see, Wi-Fi 7 supports channels that are up to 320 megahertz wide. And of course, the wider the channel, the more data it can transmit. A simple analogy is to imagine how much traffic a single lane road can handle compared to a three lane freeway or a six lane superhighway. Now there is a very special feature that arrives with Wi-Fi 7, and that is MLO technology. Wi-Fi 7's multi-link operation or MLO is a major technical advancement. It acts as a new Wi-Fi signal that you can connect to your devices to. MLO is the reason why Wi-Fi 7 standards can achieve and maintain a wireless latency of 1ms, even for the most data demanding real-time applications. This is critical for real-time and latency sensitive applications such as cloud gaming, wireless VR and AR, 4K and 8K streaming, and of course other emerging technologies like robotics. MLO also enhances reliabilities as efficient link switching provides more opportunities for interference mitigation. The old way of switching bands cost 100 milliseconds in latency each time. You see, in previous Wi-Fi generations, including Wi-Fi 6 and 5, a device can only connect to one Wi-Fi band at a time, either the 2.4 GHz band or the 5 GHz band. The latest Wi-Fi 6E products now also connect to the 6 GHz band, but still only connect to one Wi-Fi band at a time. This means that one of the bands will be unused or a device might limit its speeds by choosing the slower band. The multi-link operation of Wi-Fi 7 solves this dilemma. With Wi-Fi MLO, Wi-Fi 7 can establish multiple links between devices such as a smartphone and the Wi-Fi access point, connecting to the 2.4 GHz, 5 GHz, and 6 GHz bands simultaneously increasing throughput, reducing latency, and of course improving reliability. So while Wi-Fi 7 is still a while away for the average consumer who may only just be exploring Wi-Fi 6, this new generation has something pretty cool to look forward to. Ultimately, it will be a simplification of current technology, so no more caring which band you connect to. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye.